Hello again. It is Wing Nation presented by Hercules Tires right on our strength. Stop and sprint car racing, our favorite time of the week, and we are so glad that you joined us. Aaron, 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 Steve Post, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Fantastic. Fantastic. This will be the final uh, final time we gather here uh, in the Hercules Tire Studios. It's here. Uh, it end happened. of the year. We've talked about it. It just has flown by, but Aaron, what a season. I mean, what a year. Really? I mean, if you think back to what everyone endured last year, yeah. and then to see the success of the season and the competition and the packed grandstands everywhere, it's been a good year. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think I think getting back to the track was a big part of mm-hmm. all of that. Um, and then the race was so good. The racing's been good the last number of years. Yeah. The racing's been good. But when it's taken away from you, and, and we saw it with our road shows. We didn't do any road shows last yeah. year in 2020. And even Port Royal in the rain to do a road show and to be with all of our friends. Yeah. It was like you're sitting there, you're bummed out because it's raining and having the best time of your life. Because we're where we need to be, yeah. and then and then Houston's and Jackson and Knoxville and everything, and just what a year! I mean, what a year! Just uh, just unreal. So um, yeah, so good stuff. That's for sure. Good stuff. And uh, one, it's gotten warmed up since the World Finals. Yeah. I hope. What is the deal? I mean, I know we talked about it last week, but every year the World Finals, like just those three or four days, yeah, it's, it's really beautiful cold. Here. It's seventy five Char- today. Seventy five degrees in Charlotte today, and last Tuesday it was seventy five degrees. And Saturday at the track with yeah. the wind blowing, it felt like it was about yeah. twelve. Yeah, because last Tuesday was the race at Cherokee. Yeah. I'm out there. I'm out there. I'm like, do I wear shorts or do I wear long pants? And it was going to go into the night. So I'm like, I'll just wear jeans. You know, I mean, and it's like, and I took a sweatshirt just yeah. in case, you know. And then but you got like, Ashley yeah, that was on last Friday Tuesday. who showed up in her snow pants and the whole deal. Yeah, <laughs> that was last Tuesday. And today it's 75 yeah. degrees. And in the middle of it was crazy. Aye, 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 Bridget. So <laughs> uh, let's take a look at our Hefner Racing products, our hot topics. Um, the year of Larson. Um, we have. It's been an interesting year because we've talked so much. And, of course, Kyle Larson is one of our sprint car guys. So we've talked about the year he had on sprint cars. And we've tied in a little bit with the midgets and with the late model. And we've just kind of been like, and his NASCAR stuff's going good. Well, he got the exclamation point <laughs> with that NASCAR just, championship. Just good. Just, you know, 11 yeah. cup wins. Yeah, I mean, championship. Um, you know, just, just, just so amazing. Won the cup series. Brian Walker, Walkopedia does all of the stats. He's like the stats guru. Yep. Uh, so far. Okay, because he's not done. He's going no. Because to... Kyle, um, Alex Hayden sat down with Kyle in our uh, on media day, and Kyle, I think, told him he has somewhere in the vicinity of thirty races left, but not left between. Oh, between Phoenix yeah, I was and the say, beginning yeah, of next year. I think year. he told me he's going California midget race. Yes. maybe the one that chases running. One that chases the running. Yeah, running yeah, I think he's going there. there. He's going there, and I think There's there might more. be there might be yeah. some others. And I think he told it was either 20 or 30 races between now and the Coliseum yeah. when NASCAR starts. Yeah. We bump into each other in the carpool line. Do you really? <laughs> yeah. Ah, there we go. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, one day some guy was holding up the whole line. I mean, he might win all these races, but the whole line was held up. And I'm like, what is going on? Who is that guy up there? You know, he's helping Audrey. and everybody. But I didn't, I didn't know it was you know, him at was, first. Yeah. And I was like, it's Kyle holding up the whole carpool line. The yeah, fastest the dude in the world. Only he... line in the world he's holding up. You know what I mean? Everyone wears out. Yeah, we tease him about it. That's funny. Oh, that's great. That's, he, gosh, she just, what a, what a wonderful young man and wonderful yeah, family. I, I beautiful love family. That. Uh, you beautiful, know, one yeah. time we talked recently because we had a, a donut truck at school in the morning. And we just happened to walk in at the same time. And, you know, I, I love the family aspect. I wanted to mention, too, that picture. Um, his dad, he posted of it on his shoulders of his dad. Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. The first time at Phoenix, and he's like, you know, a few months old, and then. There's been something on my mind. I'm probably going to post something about it. I'm going to put a collage or two together. The pictures of Kyle Larson with various drivers as a little boy. Those pictures are unreal. Yeah. What I want to do is I want to, I want to put it side by side of just three or four pictures of sprint car fans with Kyle Larson this year at a sprint car race. Yeah. Because to me, it's like Janet Larson took all those pictures. Yes, Janet. Janet Larson. I mean, she just. I, I got mine. I got where he got my autograph at Knoxville. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> Janet Larson took all these pictures, all these pictures of Kyle Larson with all of these drivers from, yeah. from, from Jeff Gordon to, to, to you to, I mean, to, everybody. There's yeah, pictures everybody. of everybody. You know, she took all these pictures, but then you look at it and, and no, it's not the same, but. Pictures of people at dirt tracks on our Wing Nation page of Kyle Larson with "Here's me with him at Lincoln" yeah. and "Here's me with him." Accessibility at, and his uh, accessibility mm-hmm. is unreal. And you take those moments; those are mo- those are those are big moments for people's lives. Yeah. It was a big moment for Kyle's life as a young as a child. And you look at those pictures; it's unreal. Mm-hmm. Um, he just—it's just—I I love the idea of the picture. That's been something that's been in the back of yeah. my mind. 
because we've seen so many pictures of so many people with Kyle. Just just day in and day out race fans with Kyle, and they're all at dirt tracks, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, so fun stuff. Um, Walkopedia does all the stat stuff. Um, 89 starts so far, 30 wins. So that's batting 333. 11 cup wins, 11 sprint car wins, four late model wins, four midget wins, <laughs> crown jewel races, NASCAR, the Coca-Cola 600, the all-star race, and the championship. Late models, the Prairie Dirt Classic at Fairbury, American Legion Speedway. Midgets, the Chili Bowl and the BC-39. Arguably the two biggest midget races. Yeah. Sprint cars, Knoxville Nationals, and Kings Royal. <laughs> Arguably the two yeah. biggest sprint car races. We, we will, the likelihood of us ever seeing this again is slim to none, unless Kyle does it again next year. Yeah. Well, I think Tony Stewart's tweet summed it up. Yes, yeah, Tony Stewart's tweet just summed yeah, it up. Yeah, the, the best, best race car driver yeah, ever. Ever, yeah. Tony Stewart's saying that. Yeah, Mario Andretti, the pre-race when Mario Andretti <laughs> yeah. is saying, yeah, I mean, let, let's see, when Mario Andretti and Tony Stewart say something. And Jeff Gordon, and Jeff consider Gordon, you the best yes, in the world. exactly. He's incredible. And, again, I think the thing that is so neat is we look at it self, we all, everyone looks at things selfishly from our own little world. He won the Knoxville Nationals. We sent a text, Craiger sent a text to his, uh, John Edwards, the guy that handles all of that stuff for him. Craiger sent a text to John. John said, when are you recording the show? Craig said, Monday afternoon, we're recording the show. He said, well, Kyle's going to be at Hendrick. Why doesn't he just drop into the studio live? Nobody volunteers to come to studios live. I mean, I'm not, and I'm not saying that as a bust on anybody. No, people Nobody, are busy, especially people are busy. someone like Kyle. Yeah, people are busy. Yeah. People are busy. I mean, well, I, for, for clarification, it was actually Kyle yeah, who Kyle, volunteered to come. Yeah, in. Kyle suggested, why don't I just stop by the studio on the way back from Hendrick Motorsports? So, I mean, it's just such a, such a great young man. Um, and, mm -hmm. you know, now, and, and granted, we had a great seat for his journey the last 18 months. I mean, when, when, when there was nobody talking to him because everyone had that awkward, do we ask him the question and everything, we just dialed him up and talked sprint car yeah. racing. So, I mean, we're friendly folks with Kyle. Kyle reciprocates with us. Mm -hmm. And whenever we, we, we need him on the stage at Houston, so yeah, what time? Always. You know, I mean, always, yeah. always. We talk about Knoxville this year. I know he nice. joked about it. He was on his bicycle and he was he stopped by. He saw Ray and I walking down. He was like, "Hey, do they have corn over here and cheeseburgers?" Like no one was bothering him. He was no. just as a normal no. everyday person. And then he got in line, and the people that were serving him had no clue. It was Kyle yeah. Larson, and yeah. he was just ate just, by himself. He's and, just a, he's just a wonderful person and a talented wheelman. That's for sure. Um, world Finals Friday night. David Gravel, eleventh World of Outlaw, NOS Energy Drink Sprint Cars, fourteen total on the season, second in points. I think the big thing coming out of this is that team mm. looks like it will be intact next year. Yes. And that is going to be a handful. And for they didn't else. seem to really get rolling for a few months because they were new together. Right. With Cody so Jacobs, they were new. Year two could be. Hmm. And, and, you know, I just think that that's, I think that, uh, you know, they, they ended strong. They closed to within 80 points of yeah. Brad at the end of the year. Um, so David Gravel. And then this story, we're going we're gonna to talk to this guy, Brent Marks. Third World of Outlaw win, 13 wins total this year. Monday announces Murray Marks Motorsports, which is the whole thing we've been, he's been teasing all year long. <laughs> we busted his chops on the stage somewhere at Knoxville Nationals. Well, when are you going to tell us this deal? He finally announces the deal. He goes down to Cherokee on Tuesday night, wins that one, finishes sixth on Friday night, and wins Saturday night. Not a bad start. Not a bad start. We're going to talk to Brent. Um, and then, of course, the champion, third consecutive championship for Brad Sweet. Join Steve Kinzer and Donnie Schatz as the only three consecutive champions, three consecutive year championship. Fourth driver, Steve Kinzer, Donnie Schatz, and Sammy Swindell to win three championships. That's not a bad company not to be in. Not a bad company at all. 16 wins that tied his career high for wins. Uh, what a season for Brad Sweet. Um, Brad joins us this week on our television program uh, on Rev and Mav this weekend. Now in California, it was the Stockton Dirt Track. It was the Gary Patterson uh, Tribute Race. Corey Day, dominant win, second King of the West Series, another second generation runner. Ronnie Day was his dad, or is his dad. Um, Corey Day picked up the win. Dominic Selzy, the champ, won Friday's 360 race at Stockton. 22 sprint car wins. I believe that's the most of any driver in North America. 22 wow. wins, uh, eight 410s, and 14 360s. Uh, Dominic joins us on the program as well today. So, 
And I just think this story is one of the coolest things. In NASCAR, the Xfinity Series, the champ was Daniel Hemmert, Joe Gibbs Racing. Thursday, they're driving through Texas, heading to Phoenix, and they hit, of all things, a damn deer carcass, which mm. I can't even talk about weird. That's just weird in itself. So they hit that, mm. and it did something to the braking system of the truck so that they could drive for an hour and had to sit for an hour to cool <laughs> things off. They weren't going to make it to Phoenix for the championship race. So they call up... Um, uh, Corey Roper, who's a Texas-based truck series team. Hey, do you know anybody here? Corey knew the towing company. Oh, my gosh. I had it in my notes yesterday when I was working on something. Um, they, 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 sponsor, they sponsor John Carney. Lubbock Towing. Lubbock Towing yeah, Service. Yeah. Okay? They sponsor John Carney. John is a, and I text John to confirm all of this. He's a part-time tow truck driver for Lubbock Towing Service. Wow. At midnight Thursday night, he goes to his race shop garage, takes out all of the cabinets in the back half of the trailer, takes all the cabinets out because a, wow, a sprint car, yeah, yeah a, a, a Xfinity, Xfinity car series car is wider. Wow. At midnight, three o'clock, picks up the car and some tools, drives all night long, gets to Phoenix 30 minutes before practice for the Xfinity series on Friday afternoon, oh drops gosh. the car off, gets back in the hauler, on out he goes. Wow, Daniel I Hammer goes out and details. wins that championship. Huh. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. How how John Carney the second, one of our guys, and we've talked to him because he won the, the 305 Race Saver Nationals a couple of times, yep. I think. We've talked to him because he had some ASCS wins and everything. One of our sprint car guys just rolled up his sleeves and contributed greatly to an Xfinity to Series champion. championship. Wow. Isn't that isn't that awesome? I mean, I just that's why I love that's why I love racing people right there. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, just just yeah, well, we're going to need you to haul this car. Well, and then to at midnight, you, you imagine the last thing in the world I want to do at midnight is go strip the cabinets out of my sprint car hauler. But he does it. But you do. And what a story. Ironically, talking, uh, texting back and forth with John, he said, yeah, I guess this is his first ever win. So John d- didn't really didn't follow, even, didn't wow. even really, yeah. I mean, it's just cool stuff. I, I love when I see stuff like that happening. And another thing I love, now, we talked about him. I don't know what kind of cabinets and, and stuff he had in the truck, <laughs> but it very well could have been Hefter Racing yeah. Products uh, parts Probably and was, pieces. Yeah. So now that everyone's moving back into the shop, it's time to get that truck put back together, <laughs> and you can go to hrpracing.com and get everything for that truck. Aaron, it is easy to shop their entire line of Hefter Racing Products. It really is. You go to hrpracing.com from your desktop or right on your phone. And first time online orders use promo code MRN at checkout for 10% off your first order. And you think about that, you can redo your shop, you can redo your uh, your your transporter. 10% this is the time. Off. Yeah. This is the time to do it when you get that thing gutted out. And you got to clean it all and, and gut clean it, it all. There you go. Start all fresh when we roll off next year. www.hrpracing.com. That's hrpracing.com. The world of all on NOS Energy Drink Sprint Cars. We're at the NGK NTK World Finals Friday night. Midway through, there was a restart. David Gravel and Brian Brown mixing it up. Gravel went on for the win. Here's Johnny Gibson with a call on Dirt Vision. And now for the Dry Dean death-defying move of the week, where one driver simply amazes us with their on-track moves. Green flag waves. David Gravel, Brian Brown battling for the lead. Browning to the inside. Gravel turns it back underneath him. That death-defying move was brought to you by Dry Dean Diesel All Death, the official death of the world of outlaws and wheelmen everywhere. Visit drydean.com for more information. Team Dryden. Hey, Ashley, what are you up to? Oh, I just stopped by to grab some sage fruit apples. Now I just have to decide which ones. You can never go wrong with a Honeycrisp. They're light, crisp, 
and full of perfectly balanced flavor. Oh, hey! You could always go with one of their classics, the Gala or Fuji. They're both sweet and juicy. Grown in the heart of eastern Washington, Sage Fruit Company works hard on the farm and with their retail partners to provide high-quality apples and pears to consumers all year long. Well, I couldn't decide which ones. Thanks for the help, guys. I'll race you to check out. There's been a lot of debuts of teams, but I would dare say not many as well as the debut of the brand new Murray Marks racing team. It was a week ago Monday. Uh, Brett Marks finally let the cat out of the bag about <laughs> what he's doing. He's teased us all year long, um, and they go right out the first night out. They win at Cherokee, picked up the win on Saturday night at the World Finals, and Brett joins us now on the Dry Dean Hotline. Hello, Brett. Welcome back to Wing Nation. Hey, thanks for having me on. Brent, my question is, why didn't you announce this team sooner? I mean, it's not like you had a bad year, but uh, I, I cannot imagine scripting out starting a team as good as you guys have. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a pretty amazing week. Uh, you know, it's just yeah, we were really excited to to announce the the new formation of this team, and um, you know, it just it just took all year all year to get things finalized and and set in stone for for twenty twenty two, but. Um, so we just, uh, got that finalized about, you know, two weeks ago and decided to make the announcement during the world finals week. And it was, uh, you know, it was, it was a good time to do it. So be able to kick off two wins right away. is pretty special. That's pretty amazing. Brent, you have 13 wins on the season. Uh, but wins with the world of outlaws are special world of outlaws, world finals. Talk about what it, it, it means. I mean, obviously anytime you can beat those guys, it's a big night, but the world finals is something special. Yeah, it is. It's, uh, you know, I, I know it doesn't pay the most, but it's, uh, it's a big event to win. And, you know, you have, uh, so many people there and, uh, it's, you know, everybody around the world will watches that race. So, uh, to be able to, to win that race meant a lot to me, uh, my family and, uh, all, all of our partners. And, uh, you know, you have all the fans from all three divisions there. You have, you know all the big names from all the, all three divisions there, and to to win in front of them, you know, is a really really uh, cool opportunity. And uh, the amount of support that I, I you know we have received over the last couple of days have been you know tremendous. It's just been been really cool. And uh, yeah, it's just you know um, I know it was in the right place at the right time, but we still had to have a good car and work our way up the second there. And and uh, fortunately, you know, we got the the lead handed to us there with Logan blowing the tire, but, um, so I had to, to last that, that last several laps there and make some good laps. And, um, you know, it was just really, really cool. And, um, a great start to, to this, uh, new Murray Marks brand. I knew you, I know you have a new team, but winning late in the season and, and winning then off it, I know you're not done also. I know you're racing, I think Saturday at BAPS, weather permitting and everything. How important though, is it going into the off season to go in uh, that's whether it's this year with the new team or even in other years. How important is that as you guys go into the off season? Yeah, I mean, you always want to go into the off season with some some momentum, and um, I, I feel like we we definitely have that. And uh, I'm re I really really like the way our program is structured right now and the way things are going. And um, so uh, we're going to spend the off season trying to build that and, and you know build some depth here as well and uh, try to get ourselves you know in a position where we can start to the new year off on the right foot and um you know, i'm just really confident going into next season what what we can do and what we can accomplish and um you know it's just going to be i feel like it's going to be a great season so uh we just gotta keep our heads down and keep working uh you know that's that's the most important thing you know i know we had a lot of success this year but uh like i keep saying the hardest thing is is to try to duplicate duplicate that that type of success so uh that's that's what our main goal is here during the off season Brent, you announced that next season you're going to run a, a bit of a true outlaw schedule. You're going to, you know, pick and choose races. Obviously, stay a little bit around home for the big races. How did you come to that uh, decision? I know that you said you'd love to be back on the outlaw tour at some point, but how, how did you decide to do next year's schedule? Yeah, um, you know, we just everything kind of came together so late, and uh, just to try to, I don't know, we just kind of felt like maybe now is not the right time to do it. Uh, I think it was more of a feeling than, than anything. And uh, I just didn't want to jump right back into doing it uh, without doing it the right way. And the, really the biggest, uh, biggest decision for me was uh, when I was on the outlaw tour, I missed the first year, the first three years of my daughter's life, basically. And I was gone so much and never, was never financially stable to be able to come back home 
um, enough or get them to come out with me. And uh, so it was a struggle. And, you know, especially the first part of the year, being based out of Pennsylvania, you're, we're gone for two and a half months. And uh, that's just really hard. And, uh, you know, so I just want to get things structured the right way. That way it makes it easier on you know, my family life uh, to be able to do it. And, uh, you know, that way I'm not having to be there 24 seven. And, and really that's just getting the right people in place uh, that I can trust to be able to uh, get my operation up and down the road. So, uh, you know, that's what we're trying to, to build towards and um, hopefully we can get there one day. Uh, but uh, right now we just kind of felt like, you know, we were happy with what we were doing this year. Um, it's been fun picking and choosing and racing different formats and, you know, uh, we get to be a part of a lot of big races towards the end of the season that we would miss being on the outlaw tour. And uh, that was really important to, to me and Alan. So um, we came to that decision together and, and uh, yeah, just uh, what we're going to do next year. And, and then we'll just worry about the year after that. Brent, I want to go a little deeper into this from the family perspective. Um, a world of outlaw driving career is topsy turvy at best. And it's uh, it's a challenge. And just when you think you got things going, something in the world happens, and the next thing you know, you find yourself scratching and clawing. But I want to take this to the to the next level. Um, you are doing this alongside of Megan, your wife. Um, how important is it for a driver to have such a strong? I mean, Megan Megan is actively involved with your souvenir business. She actually did the phone screening and phone calls for Flow Racing for years and years as well. How important? How critical is it? to have someone like that alongside of you as you navigate these sprint car ownership, team ownership, driver mod, uh, uh, life you have? I mean, I think it's really important. You know, you, you always need somebody that you can uh, have by your side and, and, and have your back. And, and she, she does that for me. And, uh, you know, if I'm struggling or um, just having a bad day or, or whatever it might be, you know, she's always there for me to, to lean on and, um, you know, just supporting me 100%. And, uh, you know, and one nice thing about Megan too is, you know, when she needs to be real with me, she, she's real with me too. So even if I might not like it, she, she, she is. But so it's just, uh, she puts me, um, in perspective, uh, you know, and also is very supportive when things really aren't going my way. And, um, uh, I'm just kind of in my own head a little bit. So she just uh, really helps me out with that. And it's just nice to have somebody behind you that, that is like that. And, uh, you know, I'm just really appreciative of what she's done for me and uh, what she continues to do for me. And, um, you know, it's just been great. You know, she's been doing a great job with the, uh, the, the merchandise end of it as well. And, you know, that, that's grown into its own business and it's, uh, yeah, it's, that's been really cool. To see how far we've come along with that and um so she's starting to have something that's her own and uh that she can stay really busy with and um i can help support her with that as well so trying to return the favor a little bit whenever i can mm, cool brian your daughter uh she's getting to the age now where she's gonna ha like remember these moments with you in victory lane how neat is it to have her at the track with you and experience victory lane like she did on friday night yeah it honestly means the world to me uh it's just it's really special that to share these moments with her and um you know she's she's still talking about her win from saturday and it's just it's just really really cool and um you know i know she was mad at at megan for sending her to bed on tuesday night when we went at cherokee she wanted to stay up and watch that and but um you know it's just for me it it, it means it means a lot so you know uh, this has always been a family family team and a family sport for, for me. And this is how me and my dad have bonded, um, over the last, I won't ever since I was nine years old. So for, for a long time. And, uh, this is how we bond together. And, and this is how me and McKenna are, are bonding together now. So it's just really special to me. And, uh, you know, I know dads and their kids have different things that they bond together with, but racing is how, how we bond. And, and, uh, you know, it's just, like I said, it means the world to me. And, and I can see now when she, that she's getting older, it's, it's meaning the world to her. So it's just, uh, yeah, it, it's really cool. 
Really cool indeed, Brent. Really cool. Your season has been really cool. Maybe not how you started out in, in January, <laughs> but I think the end results yeah. turned out right. <laughs> when you think about it. Aye, aye, aye. Um, but when you think about it, it's it's worked out very, very well. We salute you on that. We salute you, obviously, on your family and everything. But, dude, congratulations on all the success on the racetrack, winning the races, the new team. Uh, enjoy this weekend at BAPS and then uh, into the off season. We uh, we wish you a great off season and appreciate the time all year long joining us here on Wing Nation. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, and uh, you know I also like to say thank you to Alan Murray and his family for you know coming on board and and uh, being a partner with us. So he's been a partner with us with uh, M and M Painting and Construction for for a long time now, but um, he's really stepped up to, to be a part of it on the ownership side of it, and uh, we're, we're both having a lot of fun with it and. I uh, hope we can build something really special together. Thank you, Alan. We love watching your car go around the racetrack. <laughs> Thanks, Brett. Hi, right, thank you. There we go. That picture with kids. Um, taking this over to, of course, we're MR on NASCAR side of it. Elliot Sadler. Elliot had a lot of success in his NASCAR career, mm -hmm. and then he went through a window of time where things weren't happening quite as frequently as they were. And during that window of time, he had a child. Mm -hmm. He won a truck series race at Pocono and got pictures of him and his child in Victory Lane. And he was telling me one time that that may be his favorite Victory Lane because his child was there. Yeah. And it was something that he can always say, now I've got pictures of you in Victory Lane. I used to be a race-winning guy all the time. But when you came along, I wasn't winning as much. And Elliot shared to me one time, we were just sitting on the back of a hauler, and he's just sharing to me how important yeah. and special that was to have a child in Victory Lane and a picture of that. So that in yeah. his, his child, I wouldn't have no, wouldn't remember now because he was an infant. I think it was his son, an infant, but there's a picture of him. Yeah, and I and know that was, was motivation for Jeff Gordon. He wanted his kids that's to right, be old that's enough right. to remember exactly. and right. see his dad, see, see dad. their dad. In, in victory lane. Yeah, see remember, the success. Yeah, I'm not, we're, not, we're not just sitting around talking about my wins. <laughs> yeah. Here's a picture of you there for one of them. So. I have a hunch McKenna Marks is probably going to have a lot of victory lanes. <laughs> yeah. though. I don't think it's going to be just one like yeah. they have now. So um, fun stuff, that's for sure. We appreciate Brent joining us. Uh, when we come back, Dominic Selzy. Oh, boy, batting down the hatches. <laughs> Dominic Selzy joins us next. Power isn't born. It's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Sunoco is a proud partner of Wing Nation. Not all fuels are created equal, so fill up with Sunoco Ultratech. Sunoco Ultratech is a top-tier detergent gasoline that is proven to make your engine run cleaner, longer, and more efficiently. Using the same detergent package as what is blended into some of Sunoco's high-performance race fuels, you can trust Ultratech for your everyday race. Whether you're headed to the track or just hitting the road, fill up with Sunoco Ultratech and fuel your best. Circle B Diecast is the new diecast outlet from Plan B Sales. What started as Lionel and Chase Authentic's apparel distributor has grown into the largest distributor of diecast and now includes Auto World Greenlight Collectibles, Brand Art, Sam Bass Artwork, and University of Racing Lines. They have a huge inventory. The folks at Circle B Diecast love racing and support drivers like Kyle Larson, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Christopher Bell, and many others with sponsorships and partnerships. And on orders over $20, use promo code MRN for free shipping. Check them out, CircleBDiecast.com. Let's go to the Dry Dean Hotline. Joining us is the champion mm -hmm. of the NARC King of the West series from Fresno, California, <laughs> Dominic Selzy's on the line. Hello, Dominic. How are you? I'm doing great, guys. How's everybody doing? We're doing well. What does it feel like to be a champion in the NARC series? Man, I'll tell you what. You, you look at the history with the series and so many amazing drivers throughout the years. Actually, the, the newest crown Cup champion being one of them. Yeah. Uh, a lot of amazing drivers have won the NARC championship over the years. Uh, you know, it's something that I, I'd always dreamed of doing and never never really knew if I was going to get a chance. You know, 2015, we were right there in the points hunt, and I broke my back. And then 2019, we were right there and, and, and just weren't able to, to, you know, solidify it with the 83 team. And, and then this year, we just really were good all, all year long. And, 
you know, we were able to finally get that championship. So it's a pretty special feeling, that's for sure. Dominic, I know we've talked throughout the year. You've given a lot of credit to Jimmy Carr. But what has made the difference this year? I mean, 22 wins is pretty spectacular. What has been just the difference for the consistency this year? I, I think it's a, it's a mixture of three things that have really, you know, kind of uh, made us so successful. And one, number one, is for sure Jimmy Carr. I mean, Jimmy's given me an outstanding race car. I mean, I, I want to say nine times out of 10, 99% of the time, I feel I have a race car to win. And, you know, we, we have podiumed, I don't even know how many races this year. With the NARC series alone, we had 12 podiums and six wins. So I just feel like our race car is just good every night. I feel like we're competitive every night. We put ourselves in a good position. And when we don't, we're able to recover from it when others sometimes can't. Um, the other thing I think is where I'm at in life, I'm so happy everything is is going really good for Dominic Selzy. Things are great, and uh, I'm just in a really good place emotionally. Um, you know, everything's really good. Got a lot of good stuff going on. You know, we're working really hard here at Selzy Enterprises, and everything's going great there as well. And then the third thing I think is, you know, and I've brought this up every time we talk, is just getting your ass kicked every week by the Outlaws for so long makes you that much better. And and I think now that uh, I'm I'm not really racing with the Outlaws very often. I'm racing at home. I think it shows the speed that you have to be just to make the show with the outlaws and, 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 you know, be competitive back there in the Midwest is starting to, to pay off for me here. So I think it's a trio of things, but all three of them are working together and, and I'm getting a little bit older now and, and everything's working together. When you, when you talk about that, Dominic, you have walked into pit areas for much of your career, knowing that you're likely going to get your butt kicked that night. You know, that's just kind of the nature of when you, you talk about moving to the Midwest and just struggling. What's it like walking into the pit area now knowing that every eye is going to be on you because you're going to be one of the cars to beat? How, how does that alter things? You know, it, it's amazing. I, I felt like I, I, I take uh, the losing and the winning all in the same way. I, I want to do it the best I can. So uh, when, when you do get your butt kicked night in and night out with the outlaws, you want to be the best version of yourself when you're doing it. You want to make sure that uh, you leave it all out there on the on the racetrack, and and you're running your ass off. Um, you know, boy, oh boy, I can't tell you how how hard those guys hit when they they kick your butt. But um, you know, we only got to race the outlaws a handful of times this year, and uh, in our own family stuff, we we struggled to qualify there one night, and then ran really really strong there. And Chico went from 19th to seventh in a almost a green to checkered race, and then in in uh, Hanford we went 12th to fourth, and uh, our steering gear broke in half, and we were able to hold on into second. I mean. No power steering. I'm I'm swimming in fluid. I I felt like we were really fast, and and every chance we got to race with them. So that made me feel really good. And um, you know, I, I think as a driver, I'm getting a lot better. But but in reality, when you show up to the races and you know that you have a car capable of winning every night, um, I want to say the pressure is more than when you're running with the outlaws because you're expected to win, and and we expect to win. When we go to the races, hey, we're gonna win tonight. And if we don't, we didn't do our job. And, you know, we, we didn't reach the goal that we had planned when we unloaded. So um, that's been very fun. It's been something that's, it's been new for me. It's been new to win this many races. I'd, I'd won 27 races in nine years, and we've racked up 22 this season. So, And we still have eight or nine to go. So we've got a chance to um, you know, win possibly 25 main events this year, which is unbelievable. And uh, it's uh, something I, I hope sticks around for a little while. Dominic, you talk about uh, how happy you are in life. You know, things are just working out well, staying in California, winning the championship. But with all the success, is there ever part of you that thinks, hmm, maybe somewhere down the road I want to go back and give that outlaw thing a, a whirl? Yeah, every single day and night. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I can tell you right now, especially with the new point fund and, and all the exciting stuff going out on the road, I would love nothing more than to be able to, to have a shot at going back out there. I, I think that in being completely honest, I know that you know, you're not running against Brad Sweet and Donnie Shots every night, but I feel like I've learned so much about what it takes to win races and, and what you need to do to be successful. And I, I know our, our race car is the best it's ever been. I would love to see where we stack up with them. But you know, unfortunately, with where I'm at in life right now, I just, I'm just i needed here. And uh, you know, with our family business, my uncle, he's got a lot going on. My dad has a lot going on. There's a lot more falling on me every single day here. So I'm hoping I could still race a lot next year, but it, it seems like, you know, we got into a big fight yesterday about, you know, just the, the amount of races. I think we were going to race probably 75 races in total this season. And, and, you know, my dad's looking more like 40 or 50 for next year. And I'm looking at like, Hey, let's run 90 to a hundred. So um, <laughs> I'm always trying to run as much as I can. I always will. But um, you know, as you get older, that responsibility of, of not only being a dad, but being an important part of the business 
and becoming more important every day is it's uh you know it kind of takes away from being able to go hey why don't we just go spend a month out month out there or, or go run the nationals or go do this and that it's really hard to not be there on mondays and fridays so um for me i, I would love to get back out there at some point um you know i, I there's been conversations several conversations of some opportunity of of uh, you know possibly jumping in some really good stuff and and uh you know being able to travel back there when i can but um it seems like every time a great opportunity comes about, um, you know, there, I'm needed more here. So right now I'm not really sure what my plans are for next year. I know we're going to race in California. I know it's going to be really hard for me to leave, but I would love nothing more than to be able to get back out there and, uh, and race with the best guys every night. Exciting stuff. That's for sure. I saw on Twitter, you heard your little girl laugh for the first time. Oh. I did. Uh, I can't close. even imagine. I remember my, I remember that. I remember I, that too, but dude, what a moment it was uh it was pretty cool i my brother actually uh called me he's in town this weekend and his girlfriend madison and uh um he's like dude you're not gonna believe it Stella laughed and i said oh well, she's probably just looking at your ugly face and and uh, i got home that night and they were at my house and and uh i'm in the kitchen probably eating dessert or something and, and i hear this giggle and i mean it was like the world stopped so that was uh man it's so amazing being a dad i i mean it Winning any, honest to God, I mean, I'll probably never win the Knoxville National, um, but I imagine that feeling probably doesn't even come close to just being a parent. I mean, it's, it's amazing the the love you have for your kids, and uh, man, oh man, I, I I adore my daughter. I, I'm just amazed every single day with what she learned. Hearing her laugh was pretty darn cool. Hopefully, I can uh, be one of those funny dads. I mean, I dressed up like a dad for. Halloween too, so um, oh, I'm embracing was... this whole dad thing. That Halloween costume was amazing. <laughs> the best ever, I mean, yeah. where do you even find those jeans and those uh, those sneakers? They're probably Gary's. Yeah. They're uh, probably Amazon your dad's. Has everything. Oh God! All right, hope he's Amazon not listening. Amazon has everything. Yeah, yeah, your dad. That's probably just your dad. I, I thought at first it was your uh, dad. I'm like, no. You <laughs> know, the worst part about that whole uh, the whole Halloween was. I got invited to three lawn meetings and two uh, neighborhood watch meetings. <laughs> so all the dads really, really liked it. They didn't realize I was uh, poking fun at them. But everyone's like, oh, man, that's those, I love those new balances. I got two pairs of them. <laughs> so uh, now I'm going to be the lawn guy of the neighborhood. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That is spectacular. Really, really cool. Fun stuff for sure. Outstanding. Good stuff. Oh, goodness. So any more motorhome adventures? I know. <laughs> You know what? Right now we don't have any motorhome adventures, but we do have a Griswold Christmas plan. Oh, boy. Uh, we're we're going to take a, a, a vacation this winter. We're going to, I don't even remember where we're going right now, but uh, uh, Gio and Maddie and uh, Nicole and myself and my mom and dad are all going to go, and uh, we're bringing Steli Bell along with us. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. I, I, we're going somewhere where there's going to be snow. So uh, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, I can see it on the writing on the wall now. There's going to be uh, a lot of fun and a lot of Twitter fun and, uh, you know, we've never gone on a family vacation before, so it's going to be really enjoyable to see all the kind of shit we get into. And uh, I'm sure we're going to have, uh, you know, plenty of fun and we're going to run all the neighbors off. I'm sure you will. And I can't wait to follow along. That's for sure. Dominic, congratulations on all the good things going on in your life. I know we talk sprint car racing here, but with the family business and more important than all of that with the family, it's just been so much fun to follow. And uh, we appreciate you giving us a little time out of your busy schedule here today. Thank you guys so much. It's been an amazing year. I know it's not done yet, but, uh, you know, 2022 is going to have to be pretty spectacular to even come close to this year. I'm going to enjoy this and look back on it for, for the rest of my life and just be thankful for all that I've been given this year, all the amazing stuff that's happened. And uh, I've been very glad to be able to share it all with you guys along the way. There we go. He is the 2021 NARC King of the West champion joining us on the Dry Dean Hotline. That's Dominic Selzy. Just like racing components, Aggressive Hydraulics purpose builds hydraulic cylinders to perform for customer specific applications. They design and manufacture mobile style single stage cylinders as well as multi stage telescopic cylinders. It's a no one size fits all approach with Aggressive Hydraulics. Hydraulic solutions for virtually every industry that uses hydraulic cylinders. They proudly design and manufacture all cylinders in the United States. Check out the video of their story at aggressivehydraulics.com. Flow Racing is the home of grassroots racing, with over 1,300 races streaming live in 2021. Watch the Lucas Oil Chili Bowl, World 100, Dirt Late Model Dreams, Sweet 16, and much, much more. Subscribe today by going to flowracing.com slash MRN. 
From sprint cars on dirt to SK Modifieds on pavement, arena cross, drag racing, and everything in between, it's here, live, and on demand. Subscribe today by going to flowracing.com slash MRN. That's F-L-O racing.com forward slash MRN. Over 200 events from coast to coast, and they're celebrating 30 years of scattering soil. The American Sprint Car Series, the world's largest sprint car sanctioning body, is bringing more thrills with wing and even more non wing action in 2021. 11 regional tours, the national tour. No matter where you are, we're coming to a track near you. Can't be there? Get double the streaming fun with Racing Boys and GoRacing.com, bringing all the adrenaline to your favorite streaming device. See the full lineup of this now at ASCSRacing.com. One Sprint Car Place is the address of the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum out in Knoxville, Iowa. Great, great spot. And let's take a look at our National Sprint Car Hall of Fame birthday calendar. Uh, Monday, J.W. Hunt. Wednesday, Art Bish Sr., Granville Buster Warkey. Kenny Woodruff on Thursday. Robert Root on Saturday. Uh, O.D. Lavely, Tommy Milton, and Joe Saldana. Has a birthday coming up on Sunday. Today, Galen Fox, a 2002 inductee into the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame. He grew up near the Bloomington Speedway in Indiana. He was too young to drive, but he owned a coupe. But there's a guy by the name of Bob Kenzer who, when he had trouble with his car, he would jump into Galen's car. Well, he did drive in 1965 after coming home from the military. Won 13 times, but his big gift when it came to racing was building engines. And he teamed up with Bob Kinzer, and they had a lot of success in the late 60s and early 70s. He also works for Grant King on their IndyCar program. And then in 1976, started a partnership that would give us the Genesee Beer Wagon, one of the more iconic mm -hmm. cars in IndyCar and Champ Car Racing. They won the 1977 championship with Sheldon Kinzer at the controls. 1990. IndyCar Racing was getting a little more than he wanted to stomach as far as the household of the budget goes. Fox Co-Engineering, Sprint Cars and Silver Crown Cars. And in 1997, he took the People's Champ, Dave Darlin, to the Silver Crown Championship. Had a lot of success with many drivers, and that has earned him membership into the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame. 2002 inductee, Galen Fox. Pretty cool stuff, ain't it? Absolutely. I got to meet him um, years ago in Indy. Did you? During, cool. Yeah, when I ran some Silver Crown stuff. Amazing history. Yeah, yeah, it really is. That's what I love about the Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum. You know, we talk about the Mount Rushmore guys, the guys we know mm -hmm. about, but, it, but the Mount Rushmore guys would not be Mount Rushmore guys with the Galen Foxes of the yeah. world. And Absolutely. that's what I love about the Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum. It celebrates all entities, all elements, all parts of the, uh, the Sprint Car world, including Galen Fox. I wanted um, to um, give a quick shout out to our friend Lacey White, who had her yes. last day at the Hall of Fame yesterday. I know. She's, what are we going to do with Lacey? I Dawn? know. I got a hug from her quickly here at the at the World Finals, but she yep. had her last day. She's moving to upstate New York. Upstate New York. I saw that. But yep. she's done a lot for us and certainly for the Hall of Fame. She's for, phenomenal, isn't she? She's yes. like just one of the most awesome people. Yeah. I mean, she's just, you, you meet her. And three seconds later, you say, this is a wonderful person. Um, absolutely. And then you get to know her over years, and that never diminishes. <laughs> no. I mean, it never, it's not like, well, I guess she wasn't. No, you don't say. You know, some people you meet and say they're really cool, and you find out they're not. Well, she's not one of those. No. She's awesome. So, yeah, we, we wish, wish her the her best. best. Yep. That's for sure. That's for sure. Uh, they have a raffle car coming up, Aaron. They do. Sprint car. I know. I'm buying it for you. That's right, baby. I'm getting on. I'm got to talk to. Got to. Got to. Got to talk to some folks. Go talk to Pittman and get you a seat. Talk to Pittman and get me a seat and some tear offs. That's right. <laughs> Woo! All right. Triple X chassis, Moyle racing engine. You good with that? Yeah, I'm good. You, with that. it, oh, yeah, that'll absolutely. work. That's oh, yeah, what you're yeah, thinking. We'll, we'll park it around the front stretch. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's the 14th raffle car, and all the proceeds go to the Sprint Car Hall of Fame. It's twenty dollars for a ticket or six for a hundred, and they will be drawing December of 2022. And it's a good time to go to SprintCarStuff.com and get your Christmas shopping done for the Sprint Car fan on your list. Also, go to WingNation.com and get your Wing Nation apparel for the Christmas person on your list as well. That's www.WingNation.com. This is our final Tuesday show, but we're not done this week. Coming up on Thursday, mm -hmm. the CEO of the World Racing Group, we are in the habit of ending our season with Brian Carter, and yep. he's going to be in studio with us here in the Hercules Tire Studios, and we are going to just sit down and chat with him. And we're not done throughout the course of this year because we have Drydeen Salute to Champions. Yeah. And there's some of them, like you just heard Dominic Selzy, will re-air that a little bit later on this year. 
but then there's a bunch of new ones mm -hmm. that we haven't aired here on Wing Nation. And so it's going to be the Dry Dean Salute to Champions all off-season long on wingnation.com and on all of our social media platforms, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. You can follow along with us there. Finally, coming up this weekend, it's Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. And you and Ashley got a chance to hang out with Brad Sweet, the we big did. cat. We and I did. guess the big cat was in rare form. He was. He was very animated and candid, and it was a great interview. Great interview. So that's this weekend on Rev and on Mav. We appreciate our guests, Brett Marks and Dominic Selzy, for joining us here. More important, though, than all of that, thank you for joining us here on Wing Nation, presented by Hercules Tires, right on our strength.